Warning, the following video covers Disney Pixar's film Lightyear. There will be spoilers, and if you haven't seen the movie yet, you're gonna regret watching this before watching that. Last chance to hit that eject button. Spoilers in three, two, one. Welcome to everything you missed in Pixar's latest film, Lightyear. Just in case you're a time traveler and new to Pixar, let's get the basics down first in Pixar land. Buzz Lightyear was an action figure that was based on a movie that Andy saw as a kid, and this is that movie. So naturally, if a toy is going to be made after a movie character and that toy has pre-recorded sayings on it, then it's safe to say that those pre-recorded sayings are going to be found in the movie. Let's go into the history and see what Buzz Lightyear said back then, and then see what he says now. <gasps> My ship! My ship! Terrain seems a bit unstable. Terrain seems a bit unstable. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Star Command, come in. Do you read me? Why don't they answer? Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Star Command, come in. Why don't they answer? No readout yet if the air is breathable. No readout yet if the air is breathable. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? There seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. You're mocking me, aren't you? You're <laughs> mocking me, aren't you? Buzz Lightyear mission log, stardate 4072. Buzz Lightyear mission log, stardate 4071. As a member of the elite Universe Protection Unit of the Space Ranger Corps, I protect the galaxy from the threat of invasion. As members of the elite Universe Protection Unit of the Space Ranger Corps, we've been charged to protect the galaxy from the threat of invasion. Prepare to die. Prepare to die. Not today, Zerg. Not today, Zerg. Not today. Not today, Ivan. To infinity and beyond. To infinity and beyond. The weird thing is that Buzz Lightyear was voiced by Tim Allen, and last I checked, he's still alive. So why they thought it'd be a good idea to change the voice of Buzz to the voice of Captain America, I have no clue. That's right, Chris Evans is the new voice for Buzz Lightyear. But the old Buzz Lightyear got an Easter egg. Not this Buzz, the Buzz that's so old, he never actually made it to the screens. Back when they were trying to create a name for Buzz Lightyear because they didn't have his name yet, one of the names they kicked around was Tempest from Morph. Stupid name, I know. Which is why that name didn't make it to the final name. So now we know him as Buzz Lightyear. But if you look at Darby's suit, it doesn't say Darby, it says Tempest. As in Tempest from Morph. As in one of Buzz's possible names. But there's more to scream about. Like the Wilhelm scream. We heard that in the very first Toy Story we ever saw. And now we have it again in Lightyear. And it's the same person both times. Now what about the famous Luxo lamp? Well, if you squint your eyes and drink your favorite adult beverage, you might be seeing it in the stars. Still don't see it? Need some help? Let me stretch your imagination for you. There it is. And if you don't think that's a stretch, then the like button isn't a stretch either. Hit it. Is it just me or is it beginning a lot like passengers? Everyone is in a deep sleep and bam, someone wakes up. Here's another funny Easter egg. Notice the oxygen tanks? Those aren't oxygen tanks. Those are scream canisters from Monsters, Inc. If you grew up with vintage video games, you know what's going on here. Sometimes you had to clear the dust off your game just like that. We also get a visit from a famous character in Toy Story. Well, a famous prop. And you know what prop I'm talking about, don't you? The pizza plant truck. If you watch when Buzz is rushing to the launch pad, if you look right below the road, you will see a weird version of the pizza plant truck. Why the heck is there a random vending machine in the movie besides making a lame joke about making sandwiches backwards? It does have a more important meaning than that. If you pause when he goes to get the food, you will see cookies from the Poultry Palace. Now, if you don't know what that is, you need to get caught up on Toy Story 4. The vending machine also has Wade Water. And Wade is the main character in Pixar's next movie, Elemental. You know what they didn't put in Lightyear? The most famous voice in the history of Pixar. That's right, John Ratzenberger. Once again, they chose to leave him out of the movies. While we're on the subject, we heard about the evil Emperor Zurg all the way back in the beginning. Emperor Zurg has been secretly building a weapon. Then we met Emperor Zurg in Toy Story 2, and if you remember, Buzz said Zurg is his father. I have a lot of catching up to do with my dad. <clears throat> Good bro, son. That's my boy. Go on, buddy. Oh, you're a great dad. So they make hint to it right here. Dad? <laughs> you killed my father. No, Buzz. I am your father. 
but chose to make the story totally inconsistent with what they already told us about him in the past. <laughs> Guess again. It seems like a weak storyline playing on time travel if you ask me, and not connecting the pre-existing facts that we already know about Buzz Lightyear. You know I can't deal with sad eyes. Look at the rookie Buzz. And now Buzz's weakness is sad eyes. Sad eyes? Really? Oh, Pixar. They gotta bring in lightsabers as well, so you're more motivated to go buy one when you go to the money parks. And I know it's not a lightsaber lightsaber, but come on, it's basically a lightsaber. Speaking of lights, what about his laser light on his arm? That's so powerful, right? Now instead of using that, they use a gun. And the gun breaks after just a few shots. Remember this guy in Toy Story 4? Right. Bill Hatter is the voice for him, and they used his voice as the super annoying rookie in this movie. Let's go back to Star Wars for a second. There was another subtle Star Wars reference in this movie. When she asks who's in the cockpit, recognize this response that he gives her? Copy control, uh, just the um, uh, uh, cleaning crew, cleaning crew. Basically, it's a plan when Han Solo was rescuing Princess Leia. Uh, everything's under control, situation normal. Uh, just the um, uh, uh, cleaning crew, cleaning crew. And his droid cat seems to log into computers just like R2-D2 did and they can both display hologram messages. But the cat looks more like Jones from Aliens than it does R2-D2. Now, Ivan stands for Internal Voice Activated Navigator. And get this, it's voiced by Mary McDonald Lewis, and she's the voice for OnStar, the navigator in your car. Now, you need to watch the credits in this one because not only do they suppose with one, but two post-credit scenes. And the first one is loaded with Easter eggs. If you look on the shelf behind Burnside, you will see a statue of one of the aliens from the Pizza Planet claw machine. Speaking of the aliens from the Pizza Planet, what about during the space dogfight? If you look in Zerg's ship tracker, would you say that that's a Buzz Lightyear ship or one of the aliens? Speaking of aliens, if you look at this trash can looking outcast named Derek, you see an Easter egg. There's some scribble on his belly that says El Resigro Sembrero VV, something like that, I don't know. Which in English means the risk always lives. Get the Easter egg? If you watch the creepy alien franchise in Aliens, look at Private Vasquez's suit. It's the same thing, even the same writing. Fits like a glove. Buzz hid under the floor to hide from Zerg. It's also how they hid from stormtroopers in Star Wars. Wait a second, we traveled too far into space. We need to go back to the post credit scene. Sorry about that, ADHD took over. And then right there, that's Bernie from Wally. -E. I could be wrong with this one, but I feel like the second post credit scene could be trolling Star Wars. My thought is that it's a reference to when the rebel base is going to be destroyed, they spend like three hours planning the evacuation. So what do you think, is that a reference or am I totally not even close? Tell me what you think. Then when you thought this is for sure the end of the movie, not only is it not the end of the movie, but it's not the end of Emperor Zerg. They gave us a third post credit scene, teasing to another light year. And they're trapped in cones. So Pixar is implying that this is where toys got the idea of hiding under traffic cones in Toy Story 2 because apparently toys can't come up with ideas on their own, which is stupid because the only reason that why they're under the cones in the first place is because if humans saw them, they would have to play dead. Remember the spaceship that we see Buzz arrive in on for the first time in Toy Story? Well, none of the ships that he's flying in look like the one that he landed in until the very last ship that we see in the movie when he's walking around with his collectible crews in their fancy suits. And they finally get the laser on the arm even though we still don't get to see them shoot it. So they tease us with a cool laser for years. Even in the commercials, they talked about the laser. And then in the actual movie, they don't even show the laser being used. Thanks, Pixar. If you notice the future socks, he kind of looks like he's paying tribute to Terminator, but he's actually paying tribute to Flint, one of the villains in Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Then if you look at Hawthorne's suit, she has the number 42 on it. That's also a reference to Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, as that was the number of their ship. It's also the answer to the ultimate question of life in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is 42. The building that they're erecting here also has a striking resemblance to Space Mountain, even with the antenna on top. But the space station in Buzz Lightyear Star Command was also in the shape of Space Mountain. And even though I'm not a fan of time traveling in this movie, I have to give Pixar some credit because in Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, Buzz fought off an evil Buzz Lightyear from an alternate universe. 
Did you see an Easter egg that I didn't? Comment below what that Easter egg is and you could be featured in the next video. Speaking of the next video, what movie you want to talk about next? Let me know what movie you want to talk about. If we haven't already talked about it, your comment could be featured in the next video. Thank you to the members for supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. If you want your name up here and bonus videos that only members get to see, then click that join button down below. And until our next adventure, gents and gentlemen, let's remember we'll support love all. Share a smile. They are contagious. One hundred percent hyperspeed.